I'm Scott Allen Miller, and welcome back to our fourth episode of the Camera Cafe. I'm glad that you were able to join me again. It's great to have these little asides to come down and talk about something as fun as cameras and photography and videography. And today, I have a topic uh, that's going to go back to our first two episodes. I talked a bit about digital SLRs and specifically the Nikon DX line, like the D3500 that I have here. And I've only talked about the camera thus far, and I think it'll be really valuable, especially for this particular lens, uh, body, <laughs> to talk about the lenses that are available for it. And the reason I want to do so is because I think that there is a lens lineup that makes this specific body and the ones just like it, the D3300 and the 3400, really interesting. And when I bought this camera, which I mentioned in the earlier video, I bought this D3500 last year. It's a several year old camera, but it is the last of the Nikon DSLRs in the DX range. And the DX is the older range. This is originally, it's called a DX because it was the digital uh, format. FX came later as the full frame format going back to 35 millimeter. But when they first released their first DSLR, DX was the only format around. And I started on a D50, and so I started with that original format and stuck with it over the years. With the D3500, when I purchased this, I was, as you often are, uh, caught between wanting to simply use the lenses that I already had or wanting to get new ones. And of course, as a camera person, getting new ones always seems to win out as the decision in the end. Uh, but with this camera specifically, I felt that getting new lenses made a lot of sense. For one reason, my older D90 is still a perfectly good camera, works great, takes beautiful pictures. My daughter is able to use it and I'm able to use it as a backup camera. And it has a nice selection of lenses that I have for that, but they're not extensive. I have a wonderfully fast, low cost 35 millimeter, which is the DX formats nifty 50. And I have prime, and I have a really nice zoom that covers a very large range, I believe 18 to 200, and it is vibration reduction. It is a much older lens, but it does a great job. I love its results and I've used it so extensively over the years, that has been my main lens for more than a decade. Moving to this camera, I wanted the flexibility of some newer lenses with some new capabilities. I wanted to broaden what I had available. I wanted to uh, modernize so that this camera, I'd be able to take advantage of all of its latest technology. And I didn't want to cripple my D90 and make the two have to share a lens because I would never use the D90 again. It would be essentially useless if one of them had the 35 millimeter and the other had the zoom and that was it. So on this camera though, because this is a lower end camera, it's very inexpensive and I bought it used. Because of that and because of what Nikon has offerings of, I decided to take the interesting approach of working with their kit lenses. Now, kit lenses are often inexpensive and lacking in features and you generally get what you pay for when it comes to lenses of this nature. I think Nikon generally does a pretty good job with kit lenses, but I think with the, the, the D3500, or the D3000 series, the 3X Audot series, and the new series of lenses that they have created for it, I believe we have something really, really interesting within their kit realm. And that's why I wanna talk about these specifically. Now, with this camera, really old lenses, we're talking 20 years old, that need the motor built into the camera, they are not gonna work with this camera body. The last camera body you could use that with was the D50, which I had around 2006. My father has now. That is a specialty camera that was a hybrid for those. We are assuming anything after the D50, so the D40, the D70, the D80, 90, all those, uh, they, from the late 2000s, uh, they all require slightly more modern lenses that have the motors in the lens rather than in the camera body. And that allows us to have smaller, lighter camera bodies um, and obviously the lenses are heavier, but the technology upgrades in the lens rather than in the camera as far as focusing motors and zoom motors. Now, with this specific model, they came out with a new line of lenses and they are a little bit odd. So it is the AFP series and the P denotes the new 
uh, I believe it is pulsing step motor, but it is a specifically faster, lighter, more accurate, quieter motor for the focusing. So you get a little bit of an advantage uh, in how the lenses react. Slightly better for video, although if you're using this camera for video, you've really messed up your purchase. But if you're gonna do like 99% photos and you just want the ability to do a video under those really specific circumstances, Okay, it'll pull off some moderate video and these lenses are great for that. But in general, these are just a newer line of lenses. It's the latest technology from Nikon at the time that this camera came out. Um, it is an F mount, so it shares that with the DX and the FX line, but the DX lenses are smaller and lighter uh, and will vignette heavily if you put them on an FX filter. Um, uh, and so all these are for the DX sensor. What's interesting here with the AFP line, they only ever made three lenses that are DX size with the AFP uh, designation before they discontinued making DSLRs. And so this is the entirety of the Nikon AFP family. But they basically, now I, I'm using the term lightly, but they essentially only made these lenses in kit lens form. And that's really interesting. So I wanna talk about this. So this lens that's on here, this is the uh, 18 to 55 millimeter, that is an f3.5 to 5.6, uh, is the actual kit lens for this camera and I believe the model before it. This is a very versatile lens, is very small, it collapses way down. I do want to point out that it is this unlocking style lens, so you have to unlock it before you're able to use it. And you'll see I'm going to the limits of the zoom here. And if I want to, when I'm done with it, I have to press a button on top right here and that will allow me to close it down. It'll then go into a lock position, which is great for carrying it around, but you do have to unlock it before you can use it. Uh, and that is an extra step and it's manual, but it does make carrying it around really nice. So trade-offs, uh, but I do like this lens a lot. All three of these lenses come in a VR or vibration reduction option or in a plane option, which is a little bit less expensive, but you're going to have to hold your camera a little bit more steady. They also use a little bit le less electricity, so it's not necessarily a bad thing. Your battery is going to last just a tiny bit longer if you don't have the VR option. I personally, having owned one of the first uh, generation VR lenses for the DX family, the 18-200 to 200, uh, that I mentioned earlier, really appreciate that small amount of vibration reduction that that is able to do. And so when I bought these, I made sure to get all three of these with vibration reduction, and I appreciate it a lot. In the wide angle, not such a big deal, but when you're going for the telephoto, you're going to appreciate it immensely. And of course, in the middle, you're gonna really like it. This is your main lens, so you're gonna use the 18-55 to 55 all the time, if you're a normal photographer and having that VR on it will be great. All three of these lenses match each other really, really well in handling, in look and feel, um, in the image quality, in their build. Um, they all have plastic mounts, that's worth noting. It's normally, you're getting lenses with, with metal mounts. These are black plastic. I mean, they look nice. They do a good job. It's a very sturdy plastic. I mean, this is, this is a Nikon build here, right? So even though it's plastic, you can really put a lot of faith into it, but uh, these are definitely lower cost lenses and essentially, while well, this one's the actual kit lens, these are matching lenses from the kit lens family. So we can think of these as a kit of kit lens. It's a meta kit. Uh, and I think this is really special as cameras go because normally you have a kit lens and you have to build a completely different category of lens system to get more capability and you end up with uh, this like kit lens that, that falls in, it's like it's almost like a demo lens. Well, it's enough to test the camera, but you're not gonna ever actually use it, even though sometimes it's a pretty good lens, like this one. In this case, Nikon went a little bit higher, made a slightly better quality than they normally would. In this case, Nikon went above and beyond and made a kit lens that's so good that you're very easily gonna wanna use this forever. There's really very little reason to replace this lens. Now, if you need a very fast lens, a prime or whatever, you're gonna wanna supplement with that, but you may never wanna look for a mid-range zoom again. And instead of making you go to a really high quality something else or completely leave the system or have uh, non-matching lenses, we have everything that matches, starting with the wide angle. And I love this one. I love just going out and doing street photography. This is a 10 to 20 millimeter, and it's the same. It is an F 4.5 to 5.6, or almost the same. Uh, so the speeds match pretty closely here. 10 to 20 is a really nice range for a good wide angle. So that is the DX. Again, that's the ASPC 
sensor size, so it's a crop factor of 1.5. So in full frame or 35 millimeter equivalent, focal lengths, you'd be looking at a 15 to 30, roughly. So that's a really good, 15 is wide, but not absurdly wide. You're not dealing with like uh, a strong fisheye. Uh, and 30 is enough that you can do really practical photography, right? You're not quite a 35, but you're into that 24 to 28, sometimes inching up towards the 35 uh, that you would do for like street photography or close up um, portraiture. You can do that with this lens and still go really wide. So this is just really useful. And then when we want to go onto the wide, remember we have an 18 to 55 in the middle as our main lens. I'm pretty warm out here today. And uh, when we want to go really long, this is a very long lens. Now these two do not collapse. There's none of that locking. This is their real size. Only the only this one has that locking. But this one, you extend it. This is a very large lens. And this one goes from a close-in focal length of 70 millimeters up to 300. So this is a very not extremely long focal length, but it's quite long. Now remember, again, ASPC 1.5 crop factor, so that 70 is actually a 105, 105 millimeter, and that 300 is an equivalent on full frame of 450 millimeters. So this is really, really long. It's not quite that 600 or maybe 800 you're gonna get in really, really expensive, super long telephotos, but we're getting up there. My old lens was 200 millimeters or 300 millimeter equivalent, and that is pretty long. You can get really uh, good distance shots with that, but I find myself often working at 200 millimeters. So going up to 300 or 450 equivalent gives me a lot more to work with, and I like it a lot. My Lumix that I work with a lot, uh, quite a bit for video, uh, if you see my video series on Take Flight with Scott on YouTube, uh, much of that is shot on the Lumix uh, FZ300, which has a uh, 600 millimeter uh, equivalent um, on, a, on a very small sensor. And at 600, you're getting awkward to use and you really need super fast lenses and lots of stabilization. It's difficult to use something at 600. At 300, you're pretty good. And at a 450 equivalent, you may want to pull back a little bit, but you're, you're within a very workable space, especially with the vibration reduction. Again, if you have a 450 millimeter equivalent and don't have vibration reduction, you're probably going to be sorry. That is a very long length to try to hold even at really fast shutter speeds. So I like this family a lot and it's special because the cost of each of these is extremely low. I believe I paid in the vicinity of $300 for each of these lenses in excellent conditions used. I bought these specifically from KEH, uh, just in case you're ever looking. I am not an affiliate. I don't have any links, at least not at the time that I'm making this. Maybe in the future I will. Um, but I bought all the body and all three lenses all at once from them for, I believe, just about $1,100 total across all of them to have three excellent zooms that completely match and are all on Nikon's latest technology for the F mount uh, and the top of the line as far as depending on how you look at it for the DX. What a deal. And we get everything. We have essentially, not quite, there's a tiny gap between 55 and 70. Other than that, we have basically a continuous 10 millimeter to 450 millimeter, all at slow, but not terribly slow speeds. About 5.6 is the slowest we end up as the as we get across this range. So no point are we stuck with like a 5.6, uh, I'm sorry, a 6.3 or anything like that, except for at 450 on this one, we do get to 6.3, it's the only spot. So for the most of it, we're pretty good. We never are stuck with like an F8 or anything like that. So I love this. I, if you're looking for an entire complete set where you can do so much stuff other than really serious bokeh, if you need all the tones, this is not the set for you, but you can simply pick up a one or two primes that are gonna have that really large F number, um, you know, an F1.4 or so. You could get that for this uh, and have those for those circumstances. Like an 85 millimeter portraiture lens might be a really nice supplement to this series. And of course, I always recommend for this, you should always have a nifty 50 super fast prime. Uh, on this one's 35 millimeter and I have it in the other room. So I already have that. And those are really cheap on the Nikon, always have been. Uh, and so this set, I feel is really special. You can do so much with it. 
this is enough to do most professional work even though it's not a professional camera in any way and it's certainly not a professional budget for a professional camera you would not even get into a body for eleven hundred dollars let alone an entire series and admittedly this is not quite the same as what you would get with a professional camera this is a more limited body but it, an excellent one these lenses are plastic mounts they're not that fast they're relatively basic plastic lenses but they are still extremely high quality very versatile very new technology it's just such a great combination and i know of no other kit of lenses that create this high-end kit lens complete system that you can do with this and so it's one of the reasons that the d3500 is such a special camera for me i think if you went down you could go as old as the d3300 and with a firmware update it will still support these lenses but if you go back to the 3200 which i believe still has the same sensor as this camera uh you cannot so be aware the d3000 at the 10.1 megapixel, I believe, uh, certainly cannot use these lenses. The D3100 at 14 megapixel cannot. The D3200, which I believe is the 24 megapixel in here, you cannot. But the 3300 with the firmware update, the 3400 and the 3500 all allow you to use this great new updated lens system, plus all the old lenses that you used on the 3100 or whatever. You could do the same thing with uh, the higher end models, of course, and the 20 uh, megapixel upgraded sensor. I'm gonna do a video on that sometime in the future because I think it's a very interesting one. Uh, so you're not limited to only this camera body or camera series, but you are limited to the DX sensors, the ASPC crop of 1.5, and uh, relatively recent DSLR bodies. But you can go into the 5 series, the 7 series, the Pro series, um, and still use these lenses. Of course, if you're going to be spending $2,000 on a body, these lenses, while extremely cool, may not be what you want to use. You may be spending $1,000 per lens or so, and that makes perfect sense. But for a lower cost experience in the DSL world, I, I find this really hard to beat. As a Nikon enthusiast for most of my career um, and wanting to stick in the DX and, and do all these things, this is just such a neat combination. I, I don't know what to tell you. It's just, it's unique and I'm not gonna be able to get it on anything else. Um, and it lets me, at a reasonable price, do just about anything, and especially anything I would wanna do with a DSLR body. If I was doing video work, this may not be the series of lenses that I would want, but this is a photographic tool, not a video tool, and so that is just fine. I encourage you to leave your comments below, ask your questions if you wanna know anything about these lenses, this camera body, this system, why I chose this, why I like Nikon, why the 24 megapixel instead of the 20, all those things, love to have conversations about that. I'm so glad you're able to join me here on the Camera Cafe. I would ask that you like and subscribe, it makes a big difference for the channel. And if you know anyone who's interested in cameras, please let them know about the show because we've got more content coming and I'm just getting started. And it's so great to have all of you here. Thanks for joining me. I will see you next time.